It is good to hear the choir gather. And speaking of that in such a way of uh, thank you to Pastor Mark, who is, um, if you're at, ever at our choir practices when we do have them, I, uh, it's just an opportunity to uh, have him. He, he brings forth uh, things about the songs, not only that, or the writers, but he also stretches us as a choir to really start to bring out harmonies and uh, I love the harmonies. Uh, you'll have probably have seen that with like Gaither songs or anything like that. Anytime there's a quartet or a trio or anything like that, I just love the harmonies that come out. So I'm thankful to Pastor Mark for uh, stretching us the choir. This morning for a few moments, and I mean a few moments, uh, uh, let me joke, all right, for just a sec. Some of you might go, woohoo, I get to get out of here early because I'm not going to hold you in place to you could call it a, a, a budget thought process, a town hall meeting uh, within the service. So what's going to take place is we're going to actually have a little teaching um, so please open up your hearts and your ears because you're going to find out the very first thing Jesus says is listen. <laughs> and then uh, after um, a small amount of teaching that, that God has us, Mark chapter 4, along rattling away, you can turn to Mark chapter 4, verses, I know it says 1 through 25. I'm actually shortening it down to 1 through 20. Um, that's okay. That's the way the Holy Spirit moves. Um, like I said, it is not about me and what I'm going to do. It's about how God presses upon and directs. And I'm telling you what, when things come up with the leadership of the church, I ask God, well, how, you know, how do we walk through this together, God? So at the end, Pastor Mark will then come up. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cue everything, okay? He's going to come up. We're going to see Take Time to Be Holy. Uh, more, uh, this is Pastor Brent kind of thought. It's not humor funny. It is like, I love take time to be holy right before any kind of discussion about budget. <laughs> there you go. Just so we are on the same page. Take time to be holy at the same time of talking about budget. So what will take place, if you do get up at that budget conversation, you're, please, don't feel guilty. If you want to get up and leave during the budget thing, that's okay. Um, but then we are actually going to move after, right after that closing song, right into what I would say a town hall meeting, just a, a small time of discussion about the church and the way it's moving forward and how it moves forward. Um, see, that's what happens when you talk about budget. It is the church moving forward. Here we are, Mark chapter 4. In Mark chapter 4... It, uh, I always talk about us, the people, and, and our hearts and who we are. And I'm going to say something just brutally true. Are you ready? Here is the box that everyone is in. You cannot get out of the box, just so you know. You can't go, oh, I'm not in that box. Oh, yes, you are. Because here's how this box is. You are either the seed planter or you are the seed receiver those are the only two things in life is seed planting or seed receiving and I'm and now I'm gonna tell you this if you, once we get into it you're gonna find out a seed if you're a follower of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior with God the Father and the Holy Spirit as you're in conversation if that is who you are you're going to find out someone, or you're going to, you already know, someone planted the seed in your life, and it grew. And if you're really a follower of Christ, because you're going to find out in his teachings, you always grow. You do not stop growing, ever, ever. Because you'll take your last breath, and then you'll be with the Father. And I, I don't know what happens right up in there. I, I have an inkling of praise and worship and glory and oh, just joy. Unbelievable. But I know all the way up to my last breath, you're always growing. And I'm going to say this. You are always planting seeds also. 
And you go, how, how is that, Pastor Brent? And so just give me a few moments. I would like to read the 20 verses that I've chosen this morning in Mark chapter 4. Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him. So he got into a boat. And then he sat in the boat while all the people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling them many stories in the form of parables. Can I say this? You remember, if you were here last week, last week, remember? It was Jesus told the, the disciples, hey, have a boat on the side just in case. Because these people are always coming. And so then we come here to Mark chapter 4. And the first thing we find out is there's a lot of people coming. And Jesus gets into the boat to teach in parables such as this one. Listen. A farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field... Some of the seed fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out tender plants so that they produced no grain. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil and they sprouted, grew, and produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even a hundred times as much as he had planted. Then he said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Later, when Jesus was alone with the 12 disciples and with others who were gathered around, they asked him, what? what the parables meant. He replied, you are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God, but I use parables for everything I say to outsiders so the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, if you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all the other parables? The farmer plants the seed by taking God's word to others. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things, so no fruit is produced. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as has been planted. Jesus starts the parable with, listen. He bookends the parable with those who have ears, listen and understand. And so I'm going to say this, uh, in these few moments, of this, probably you, you know the soil, the, the, the story of the, the farmer that tosses the seeds, and the, we know the story, but we have to stop and listen and make sure we get that second part that Jesus told to those that were asking, What is it about these parables? And he said, Listen and understand. See, sometimes what we are like. Are we are like a people that go, I'm going to go to church, and I'm going to listen, and woohoo, it was good, and I'm going to go out the door. You have not even prayed. Please don't, when I say you, I don't mean you. There are individuals that walk away not even desiring to understand the words that were sung, the words that were prayed, or the words that were spoken. And this is where we fail to follow Jesus. Think about it. The words that we had. I I, again, I love worship. And we started off with what? 
Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. The scripture that we just read said that the seed that is thrown is what? It is God's word. This is the farmer's word. He takes God's word and he gives it to other people. So sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Christ gives to all wonderful words of life. Showing us his glory. Sweetly echo the gospel call. Let me stop right there. Sweetly echo the gospel call. That means sweet, 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 not words of, of, of tear down, not words of hate, not words of destruction, but these sweet words of God, I'm going to echo them. Are you, are you, let me tell you how, help you with this thought process. I'm not going to tell you what Pastor Brent wants to say. I'm going to take God's words that he has that are sweeter than my words and I'm going to echo them over and over so that people will start to hear wonderful words of life. What? Words of what? Words of pardon. Words of pardon. See, we need a world today that needs to know about pardon. We live in a world that just hates everything. We hate everything. We want to separate everything. We want to destroy everything. When we should be a people that brings about the words of pardon. You know what? I know that was the stupidest thing you ever said. But man, forgiveness has got to come your way. We won't do that. We live in a world that will, if a stupid word is printed or a stupid word is said, you just bear with me on that stupid thing. Because this is the mentality of everyone that surrounds us. Be honest. They will tell you, I hate what that person said. It, it, they, they'll go even deeper. They're an idiot. And so when we start doing and hearing that, where's the pardon? Because I'm going to tell you what. Uh, let me be brutal. Your life was stupid. And you made idiot mistakes before you knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's the easiest way of thinking of it. See, because some people, they rate their sin. Well, my sin was not as big as your sin or whatever. Guess what? Your sin was still stupid and idiotic and still sin. And guess what happened? Jesus Christ died on the cross to pardon you. Wonderful words of life. How do we echo them? See, don't just sing a song. Don't just, see, songs have got to be in, in, inside of you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Why do you keep that for yourself? Why do you keep that amazing grace, sweet sound for yourself? My chains, are, in fact, we added that chorus, my chains are gone, I have been set free. Do you know how many people are out there today right now that are in chains? They're, they're, and we pray for them. They have the chains of addiction. They have the chains of bondage to whatever their bondage, their bondage might be this thing over here, their bondage might be this thing over here, their bondage might be this. And so why don't we echo this amazing grace that brings pardon to them so their chains can be set free too? So here we are. Listen and start to understand. The first part of that verse, the, the passage we had, was the footpath. I don't tell, I, if you've ever been on a footpath that has been trodden on a lot, um, you, it's, we talk about, we were talking downstairs in Sunday school, it's fall. And you know what fall reminds me of besides pumpkin stuff? Pumpkin patches. You know what you see at pumpkin patches? Well, not maybe here. You have to go up north a little bit to, uh, there's one of the colleges, Prairie College up there, they have one, uh, is a corn maze. In a corn maze, if a bunch of youth run through that corn maze week after week after week before that's taken down for pig stuff or whatever, there's a path in that corn maze that is so crushed down, it is like walking on cement. And so thus I understand where when seed is put onto a footpath, It'll never go in. In fact, it gives such an opportunity that, let me put it to you this way. 
God's word on a footpath that is just cement is in one ear and out the other. And please, we need to be careful that we're never like that also. Remember what I said, you're either the seed planter or the seed receiver. And so we got to make sure that we are not on that footpath. Or, 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 or can I say this also? Have an understanding that sometimes when you talk to individuals, they let it go in one ear and out the other. And, I'm, and back to pardon. See, sometimes we're like this. I'll never talk to that person again about it. They, they hate Jesus. And because they hate Jesus, I'm never going to talk to them again. They're like that footpath that the pastor was talking about. They're like concrete. They do not even want to hear about God. And so because of that, man, may they rot in hell. That's the footpath. And we should never be like that. Sweetly act words of pardon. Jesus Christ, he forgave me on that footpath and he'll forgive them on the footpath. So you just keep speaking wonderful words of life. Uh, the, the second one was what? That, that it's a little, bit of, a little bit of dirt and there's some underlying rocks. So you're, you're fooled by what's on top. Boy, that ground looks good, doesn't it? Until the plant starts to sprout up and it hits that rock and it can't go any further. And, and, and then what happens? That good old California sun comes out and it does what it always does in the Miller household because we stink at raising plants and it dies. Just telling you how it is. We struggle. So I, I'm telling you, I understand this planting seed thing. It needs water. It needs, it needs things. But if it hits the rock and it has that sun and it doesn't get anything else, it will die. I love how Jesus explains to a people. They, first of all, they did the right thing. Did you guys hear what that parable said? I have no idea. Plenty, what seeds is he talking about? He doesn't even have a seed bag. And so they asked. They did the right thing. They asked the question. So we're going to talk about budget in, in just a few moments. Ask questions. Don't be fearful of asking questions. And so they asked Jesus the best question. We don't understand. Can you explain it to us? And Jesus did exactly that. He said, the one that falls on that shallow one, it's like, ready? Man, I went to church. Woo, got saved. Thank you, Jesus. There's joy. And I'm going to say this. It is real joy that goes, don't deny it. It goes into someone. They find the Savior as the Savior. And they walk out of the building into that shallow dirt that they have. Because, and they hit rocks. And the way Jesus says it is their roots aren't deep. Even though they had that joy, their roots aren't deep. They won't last long. And as soon as problems come, or someone comes up to them and says, hey, you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you believe that stuff, and all of a sudden they're backing away, no, 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 not me. I thought about this real quick, ready? You know who else did that? Peter. Peter, he got saved, right? He walked with the Savior, got taught by the Savior, was growing some roots. And what happened? Jesus is arrested and someone says, hey, are you the follower? Uh-uh, not me. Number two, are you the follower? Uh-uh, not me. I know you're the follower. And blah, 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 blah. you hear this anger? You hear this hate of the man? No, I do not connect with him. And he walks away. He was persecuted by just a, a, an acquaint, a, a, an association with the man about to die, Jesus Christ. But what did Peter get? A pardon. Forgiveness. And so, that can happen. But he also goes on about the, the thorns. You know, these two places, the, 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 the one of shallow and the one of thorns. The shallow one means your roots don't grow very good, and you die. Someone comes up and says, oh, you're, you go to that Culver City Church of God? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, no, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> or, or all these problems in the world are on my shoulders. I can't serve Jesus anymore. The other one is, is guess what? I want to be wealthy. Or guess what? 
this desire over here is more important, or this over here is more important. All this stuff become the thorns that surround me, is what Jesus is saying. You have all these other things that come in, and they choke the spiritual life out of you. And no fruit is planted. I'm going to just say this, because here's the problem with the world today. I got a lot of solvings of the problems of the world today, okay? The world and even churches will tell you, don't go to church no more because church doesn't matter. It doesn't make a difference. It's not going to happen. It's not going to fix anything. And I'm going to tell you what, I still follow the example of Jesus Christ who went to church, who taught in church, who taught in a home Bible study often. And when he wasn't teaching in a home Bible study, guess where he was teaching? On a boat Bible study. See, we're not, we don't grasp that Jesus was always pouring in, teaching people to teach other people. That's, now we're back to this planting thing. How did it grow? How did it grow? Because people decided, I don't care if the world says don't go to Bible study. I'm going to go to Bible study. I don't care if the world says Sunday schools are no longer relevant. I'm going to Sunday school because I'm going to tell you what. Sunday school is a Bible study. Sunday school is a small group. Sunday school is a growth. See, we here's where the church messed up. It started putting all these names on stuff and people started associating names with what they didn't like when, when you come into the reality of following Jesus, names don't matter. The teaching brings growth. And that's why seeds are always, always growing. You're going to either be a follower of Christ that grows or one that dies. You can't get out of the box. And so you have to decide, well, who am I going to be? I'm going to be one that I will always grow. I will, not only will I always grow, but I'm going to be... Pastor Mark gave us some strawberries one time to grow. Sorry, Pastor Mark, they died too. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you what I did learn. And, and of course, my mom grows strawberries. So I knew this already, I should say. Plants that grow drop seeds and more plants grow next to them. Strawberries are my favorite in this thought process because the seed drops and so this starts to grow. It drops and it starts to grow. I want you to know, let me go this way. Here's the original Pastor Mark gave us some and it reached over to this can and started growing and reached over to this can and starts growing and why is that because seeds drop and when seeds don't drop guess what God also has where there's more workings where birds come up and pick seeds up I'm not gonna get gross or nothing but now more seeds are dropped somewhere else and and they grow you you, you ready for an, an illustration you want to know where they don't grow on rocky soil right out there in front of the door that's gonna get cleaned up when we do our our, our our church, uh, our church uh, cleanup day, or before then. <laughs> but I, I want you to understand, not only that, but one of my favorites, are you ready, is when, when the hummingbird comes. Hummingbirds are so cool. They're fast. Boom! I gotta get this pollen and go over here and go over there and go over here and go over this tree. And I can see down at my neighbor's house how they're in their tree because God has it where seeds grow and plant and replant and all of a sudden your small church, I'm going to take the pew settings here, the small church, if you are a seed planter, then guess what? More seeds are going to plant. I got some seed planters right here. I'm just going to illustrate. And so they planted some seeds and this is what happens when you plant seeds. Hi Mary, thanks for inviting me to church. Uh, you know what? Thank you so much. I'm glad that we can be together in this place. Let me see what happens. Yes. Or you're a seed planter. And it's the same thing. Or you're a seed planter. And all of a sudden, seeds start filling up because you decided to be a seed planter. Now, I'm going to tell you what. When you're a seed planter, guess what? You've got to nourish the seed. Or otherwise, you go to Pastor Miller's house and they just die. <laughs> Don't send no church people to Pastor Miller's house. They're just going to die. <laughs> you know, we have, you have to laugh. You know, God loves it when you have a cheerful heart also. And I don't mean just in giving. I mean in a, a cheerful spirit. Because you know what? God knows that if your heart is right, people will not die. Okay? 
as you reach out, God's going to do something with somebody. Now, and I do know this. That sometimes they may go to another church. That's that hummingbird taking the seed to another place to grow. And so I pray that they grow. That they grow. Because in order to grow, it is a root check. Pastor Mark, come on up. We're about to sing this closing song. A root check. So when I first wrote down root check, even I said this to myself. You can say it now. Who sees the roots? They're under the ground. I don't know how deep they go or how wide they go or how strong they are. I'm going to tell you this. If you study things, then you learn how far roots go. Um, as in, the, the, what is it? The, 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 I want to say, sick, not sycamore. It's the, the redwoods. You know that their roots, uh, that they grow in clusters, family clusters. Okay, there must be a reason about coming together in church. Or what about um, a palm tree? A palm tree, how does that stay up in the storms? The root system. You ever, pull, you ever try pulling up, you ever try pulling up a palm tree? Man, you're going to talk about some strong roots. Even, may I say this, and here's the bad thing. You ever pull up weeds? Them roots go deep and are strong. But then God gives me strength to pull the weeds up so I don't get choked out by things so that I can grow better. In just a few moments, we're going to sing this song. In fact, if you don't want to stay and talk about finances, during the song you're even welcome to go on out the door. No one holds it against you. But planting seeds, are you ready? I told you you can't get out of the box. Here's what planting seeds does. Planting seeds advances the church doing what it's supposed to do. Money is a seed. If you talk to any financier, money is called seed money. If you want that to grow, you want your business to grow, put seed money into it. Why? So it will grow. And so we as a church, we put in our tithes and offering as seed money so that God's kingdom, so that people can grow. How do I say that? Very quickly. So that you can have a Bible study. It takes money to buy the Bible study itself so that you can learn, so you can grow. So that kids can go to camp. It takes seed money so you can pay for them to drive down to a mountain, to go up on top, to be with other kids, to go, you know what? I can't wait to see you next year because you're in the kingdom, but I know your kingdom portion is over there, but we're going to come together. It takes seed money. I'm going to tell you this very quickly. Now, I'll do it in the, in the budget time. How are your roots? Are you a seed planter? That's great. Are you even receiving some of the seed? That's great too. But we are all in the box with the Savior. And He is the one that helps us grow. Let us stand. As we're about to sing, take time to be holy. God, if we're standing here this morning, the parable, may we have an understanding. If there are things within our lives that are, that are choking us out, like thorns, God, help us to um, have the weeds removed so that we can grow healthy with you. God, if we're, if we're the ones that are, are, are not building others up with our words and our actions, so that as they see you and they run away or they have problems and they quit, God, help us to be those wonderful words of life spoken over and over to them. Help our hearts be cultivated by you in Jesus holy name amen it's not